This is level 5-2 from Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. It's a game known for its difficulty, and 5-2 was designed to be no exception. Brutally difficult, but completable with experience and practice. When speedrunners began playing this game, they expected 5-2 to be just another level they had to conquer. But as they tore it apart, they found that 5-2 was anything but ordinary. This level has challenged speedrunners like none other. Hundreds of hours have gone into breaking it down, but it's a puzzle that keeps gaining new layers. Glitches not seen anywhere else, strategies unique to this level. Mario games are known for their speedrunning tricks, but there's no level with the history of 5-2. And now, a word from this video's sponsor, Rocket Money. Look, I'm subscribed to a number of services. Streaming platforms, music, cloud storage, it's hard to keep track of it all. And recently, I realized that I was still subscribed to a platform that I hadn't watched in months. It was costing me money the entire time. Well, Rocket Money is here to help. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. It's a personal finance app that allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings, all in one place. I think it's a great tool to help you save money. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. They also automatically monitor your spending by category, give notifications when you've exceeded them, and visualize your spend to earn ratio by month, quarter, or year. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash summoning salt or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash summoning salt to get started for free. What makes 5-2 so unique? Well, it begins as a straightforward stage. You run forward while dodging Koopas and Piranha Plants. This can be tricky without slowing down, but with practice you can time your jump so it's no issue. But 5-2 gets interesting after running past a long upside down pipe. This block contains a vine, which, when climbed, sends you to the World 8 Warp Zone. So 5-2 is a gateway to the final stretch of a Lost Level speedrun. Now, the beginning of the stage, and the warp zone itself, are both pretty straightforward. You can just run and jump without stopping. But the challenge comes from the transition. How do you get from the underground section to the warp zone as quickly as possible? Well, back in 2004, tool-assisted speedrunners tried to answer that question. Bisquit published a task in February 2004 where he hit the block from below, then landed on an elevator and rode to the top. It worked, but it was pretty slow. A few days later, he found a faster method. With precise movement, you could barely land on this higher elevator, then just jump up and climb the vine. This was about a second faster, but there was still one frustrating element. After exiting the screen, you have to sit there and wait for 5 seconds while a cutscene of Mario climbing the vine plays. This is universal any time you climb a vine in Super Mario Bros. It's not unique to 5-2. But it did slow the stage down quite a bit. So, Bisquit's methods from 2004 were fast, but a question still remained. Can you somehow get rid of this 5 second cutscene? Welcome to 2008. The best Super Mario player in the world is a man known as Andrew G. Andrew is synonymous with Mario speedrunning. He's held the Mario 1 record for years and is so far ahead that he's gotten bored with it. So now, he's playing its sequel, The Lost Levels. Andrew began running the game in mid-2008 and initially played 5-2 like others did. But then, 
Andrew decided to try something new. See, whenever you leave the screen, the game determines where you go based on a value called the area pointer. In 5-2, once you pass the right lip of this pipe, the area pointer changes to the warp zone, which is why the vine takes you there. But the game doesn't care how you leave the screen. You can either climb a vine or go down a pipe, and you'll be taken to the same place. Except the cutscene only plays when you climb a vine. If you arrive somewhere via a pipe, you simply spawn in without fanfare. So even though you're intended to use the vine, accessing the warp zone with a pipe would save about 5 seconds. If only we could find a... pipe. These upside down pipes were new to the lost levels, and they put one right next to the warp zone. This would be perfect. Except you can't enter upside down pipes. None of them across the entire game. A lesser man would be discouraged, but Andrew G simply said, how about I do this instead? This is a normal pipe. You enter from the top. This is an upside down pipe. Its pieces are simply reordered, not rotated. So it's still accessible to enter from the middle. And normally, if you jump into the edge of a block, the game just ejects you out. But here, the game pushes you into the edge of the screen, and no further. So you can't exit the pipe, and by mashing jump to clip further inside, you can go down the middle. Andrew G had found the first human viable method of a 5-2 wrong warp. Andrew entered the pipe with a 349 on the timer. It counts down from 400, so the higher the number, the faster you were. There were few speedruns of the Lost Levels back in 2008, so Andrew's 349 was the time to beat. However, his platforming was pretty messy, as he picked up a star and missed a jump to the pipe. This was Andrew's first speedrun of the Lost Levels, and he wasn't going for perfect optimization. So don't get me wrong, Andrew's pipe clip was revolutionary, especially for 2008. But it was clear that his run of 5-2 had room for improvement. The first improvement came the next year, and it was a big one. In 2009, a player named Agwawaf was able to get a 357. It was pretty much what you'd expect. He used the same pipe clip as Andrew while cleaning up the earlier platforming. Yet it still wasn't perfectly clean. He had to stop and scroll the screen a bit more before jumping back across the gap. But in the end, it was enough to save roughly 3 seconds over Andrew G. The following year, Andrew came back for a more optimized run of the game, and he ended up getting the cleanest version of 5-2 we've seen. In addition to a smooth ending, he also skipped doing a backwards bump. It's easier to set up the pipe clip if you do a backwards bump early in the level. This changes Mario's position on the screen, so there's more wiggle room when jumping back across the gap. This was the first iteration of 5-2 that skipped the backwards bump, and he ended up getting a 360 on the timer. It saved three in-game increments, or about one second. For the next few years, this was the strat, a wrong warp without bumping. It was risky, but it was the fastest strategy around. But after four years, in 2014, the world record changed hands. Blubbler took the top spot. And with it, came a minor update to 5-2. This was a very smart idea to make the strategy more consistent. You start by doing two bumps, one forward and one backward. Then, by brushing off this block and rebounding to the left, you can quickly make it back across the pit. When combined with the two bumps earlier, this scrolls the screen just enough to leave a small gap next to the pipe, allowing you to complete the wrong warp. This method is super consistent, and the rebound itself is fast too. But due to the bumps required to set it up, you end with a 359 on the timer, slightly slower than the 360 from the bump-free turnaround method. As a result, it sometimes loses a frame rule. 
Oh yeah, you might not know what a frame rule is. Now, I know, a lot of you already know what frame rules are. So, we're gonna shake things up and see if we can set a speedrun explained world record. At the end of each level, the game only checks for completion every 21 frames. Essentially, this means you can only gain or lose time in increments of 0.35 seconds for every level. The best analogy of this was created several years ago by Darbian. It's as if at the end of every level, a bus arrives every 21 frames to take you to the next level. Even if you miss the bus by one frame, you'll have to wait 20 frames to catch the next one. But it also means you don't have to play perfectly. You can be close enough to someone who did play perfectly and not lose any time. A frame rule lasts about a third of a second, and an in-game increment lasts about a third of a second too. So generally for each full increment gained, you save one frame rule. There it is, new world record. Bismuth's got nothing on me. Now, that was a lot of information, but the gist of it is that in 5-2, you can only gain or lose time in increments of 21 frames. And generally, if you've saved an in-game second, you've saved a frame rule. Despite being a little slow, the block rebound method was the strat from 2014 into 2015. Its consistency was just too good to pass up. But typically, every time a new record holder took the reins, the 5-2 strategy changed a bit. And in late 2015, someone new got the Lost Levels world record. This runner was none other than Darbian. Yeah, in addition to being the bus metaphor man, Darbian also happened to be the best Super Mario player on the planet from 2015 through 2016. Initially, Darbian did the block rebound method too, even getting a world record with it. But eventually, he was looking for more time to save. So in early 2016, he decided to switch back to Andrew's bumpless turnaround method. And he got really good at it. This got a 361 on the timer, and saved two frame rules over the rebound method. But even this didn't satisfy Darbian. He wanted more time to save, darn it, and nothing was going to stop him. So in mid-2016, Darbian started trying to throw this into his runs. This is a wall jump, and it's one of the hardest mechanics in Super Mario Bros. If Mario runs into a block, he'll usually stand inside of it for one frame before being ejected out. If he's in the top four pixels of a block when he collides, and you press jump on the one frame he's inside, Mario will perform a wall jump. That's a frame-perfect trick within a four-pixel window. It's not easy. Wall jumps are used at times in full game speedruns, but typically only when it saves big time or when the alternative is more difficult. Essentially, the risk reward has to be worth it. And in 5-2, the downside is it's a frame perfect trick that kills half your runs. The upside is that it sometimes saves one frame rule. Yeah, as awesome as it looks, the 5-2 wall jump never really caught on. The risk simply wasn't worth it. So, for the rest of 2016, 5-2 remained the same. After all that evolution, after all those modifications, they were back to a variation of Andrew G's 2008 strategy. It was the method that best balanced safety with speed, so it was what stuck with top runners. Speedrunning is funny. Sometimes your original ideas can't be beaten. And other times, you have no idea when something's about to come along and crush it. At AGDQ 2017, Darbian, Andrew G, and Cosmic raced the Lost Levels. In 5-2, they all went for the turnaround strat, same as always. It was a fun race, and everything was standard. But a few days after this run, while the three of them were still at the event, they got a Discord message from somebody named Eden. Eden said that he didn't understand why they were doing such a slow method of 5-2. Well, it was the fastest strategy the three runners knew, other than the wall jump. 
Eden linked them to a Japanese Mario technique list, a website from 2004, and on that page was something that blew their minds. You just clip straight into the pipe. No need to scroll the screen extra. No need to jump back across the gap. Devil's Spell is a mechanic that Japanese ROM hackers found back in the early 2000s. As with the other wall clip method, when you jump into a block, the game tries to eject you out. However, by pressing right while in the air, the game actually pulls you into the pipe, and it's only when you land that it ejects you out. So, by repeatedly jumping to stay in the air, and holding right to get pulled in, you can eventually work your way into the middle of the pipe. This trick was right there in the open. It had been on Mana's technique list for nearly 15 years, but speedrunners never found it. Once Eden showed it to them, Cosmic, Andrew G, and Darbian spent the rest of AGDQ 2017 practicing the trick together. <laughs> They knew Devil's Spell was huge, but the first question was how much time did it actually save? With the old turnaround strategy, an optimal time was 361 remaining. But at AGDQ with Devil's Spell, they were regularly getting 363 to 364, a save of 2 to 3 frame rolls. And as they went home and began implementing it in their runs, it got even better. With a really clean clip, Runners were able to get a high 365 in their runs, saving 5 frame rolls over the turnaround. This was huge, the biggest 5-2 time save in nearly a decade. And they had an idea to make it even faster. There are two sides of the pipe, and Devil's Spell is possible on both. The left side would be faster, but in order for it to take you to the warp zone, the screen has to scroll enough. And to get it to keep scrolling, you have to start running once you're in the pipe. It's harder than the right side, and by having to make the screen scroll, it ends up not really saving time. But even right side devil spell was tricky. In fact, it was harder than all previous 5-2 strategies, save for the wall jump. But the beauty of devil spell was it didn't need to be done flawlessly. While a high 365 provided the optimal frame rule, that required perfect timing with your jumps, and immediately getting sucked into the middle. Times of 363 to 364 were more common, but that still saved time over the old strategies. Devil's Spell became an iconic trick in not just 5-2, but Lost Level speedrunning as a whole. It looked so bizarre, and was a highlight of most runs. Darbian first set a world record with it in January 2017, just weeks after its discovery and it would become a staple of the Lost Levels for years. World record after world record was set, each one containing an example of the Devil's Spell. Some runs struggled with it. Others were unbelievably smooth. Are we fast? But Devil's Spell was always there. As the years passed and runners began to master the trick, they started to look beyond Devil's Spell. The game's best players had gotten much stronger over the years. They could perform tricks that would have been far too risky in 2010. And while Devil's Spell was a difficult trick, even that had started to become trivial. So was there anything left on the table in 5-2? Well, there was one option. Recall that way back in 2004, Bisquit did a TAS of 5-2 that didn't use the wrong warp. Now remember, tool-assisted speedruns are different from real-time runs. They're able to go frame by frame and re-record, in addition to using other tools, to create a theoretical perfect speedrun. Well, in 2006, thanks to Mr. Swede finding that you can enter upside down pipes, Legendary Tasser's Phil and Janisto discovered the 5-2 wrong warp, and their tool-assisted strategy, way back in 2006, was faster than anything that real-time runners had come up with in the years since. The issue was that it was way too hard. 
Harder than Andrew G's turnaround method, harder than Devil's Spell, even much harder than the wall jump strategy. But now, nearly 15 years later, maybe people had improved enough to try it. This is the 5-2 task strategy. So it's obvious why this is faster than Devil's Spell. You barely even have to slow down. But it's like the wall is liquid. How do you just run inside of it? Well, if Mario is running at full speed, he can potentially land three pixels inside the wall before he's ejected out. But just like Devil's Spell, if you press left when you enter and repeatedly jump, Mario will continue to get sucked in. Once you're fully in the wall, you start running to scroll the screen, and can then go down the pipe. Now, several components of this trick were hard, but the real roadblock was just entering the wall. In order to land three pixels inside the wall, Mario's sub-pixels need to be correct. That's his positioning at a level more precise than just the pixel he's on. In normal gameplay, this value is essentially random. Nearly every small input you make with the D-pad changes Mario's sub-pixel value. So unless they got very lucky with sub-pixels, real-time runners weren't clipping into the wall. Even though the strategy was found in 2006, it wasn't even considered in speedruns. But by 2018, a year after Devil's Spell was discovered, a bit of progress was made. They were trying to find a consistent setup for the subpixel value, in order to make it a viable strategy. Top runner Takate was able to perform the trick using a save state shortly before the pipe. Yes! 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 and someone else managed to get it full level using a turbo controller. 420 Blaze It, the same guy who discovered the 4-2 wall clip setup in Mario 1. Over the next couple years, more players got the task strategy using a frame-perfect setup, but it was still considered far too risky to go for in runs. Needing a frame-perfect setup, combined with the difficult inputs at the pipe, meant it was an extremely inconsistent trick. They needed a better subpixel setup. In December 2020, Hitscrits found an amazing setup. By running off a ledge with down and right, and doing a full jump on any of the second through fifth frames after you land, your subpixels will always be set up for the clip. Now, this still didn't make the trick easy, but at least the subpixel setup was nearly trivial. The question did remain, could anybody actually hit this in a run? Well, leave it to Niftsky, the current world record holder in the Lost Levels. Oh my gosh, dude! We've seen so many different setups, so many ways to clip into the pipe, but in reality, they were all just substitutes for the task strategy. And now, after 14 years, it had finally been done. This is the fastest way to clip into the pipe, and level 5-2 is now fully optimized. So here's the thing, while this is indeed the task strategy, the task itself executes this faster. See, when Nitsky, Hitzkritz, and the rest did the pipe clip, they ended with a 367 on the timer. The TAS gets a 368. There's actually one more frame rule to save in 5-2, and it just so happens to be the hardest frame rule to save in the entire game. These are the inputs needed to save the extra frame rule. All of the following must be perfect, with just one frame of wiggle room. You begin with an underground fast acceleration just after you land. By pressing right, left, A, and right on subsequent frames, Mario will do a backwards jump and get up to full speed one frame faster. Later, you must manipulate Mario's subpixels with a down plus right press. Once you get to the pipe, you have to do a frame perfect jump with frame perfect height and mash A at precisely 15 presses per second to get three jumps. Exactly three frames after the last jump, you do a frame-perfect down plus right press, which gives Mario a tiny amount of speed. 
when combined with the earlier down plus right, it's enough speed to let the screen scroll early and you can quickly go down the pipe. Finally, in the warp zone itself, you start with another frame perfect fast acceleration and later perform good warp zone movement. And if you do all that within one frame of perfect, you can save the TAS 5-2 frame rule. Cosmic saw the time save initially, but King of Johnny Boy is the one that found this setup in June 2021. For the next six months after this was posted, nobody even bothered trying. Mario runners are incredible, but this was just a little too much to ask. The amount of frame perfect inputs required in a small span? Not even worth going for. But by early 2022, the frame rule did start to pique the interest of somebody. And once again, it was Nivtsky. Nivsky is the best Super Mario player on the planet. If anybody could do this, it would be him. But even Nivsky didn't feel confident. He decided to try breaking it up into different steps. Step 1. Use a save state as you enter the pipe, and try to get the screen to scroll quickly. And eventually, he saw results. Holy cow! This was enough for him to stop, but six months later, he came back to it. And this time, he backed up the save state to before the pipe. Oh my god! Nivsky had successfully gotten the pipe entry. This was the hardest part of the trick. So, he tried doing full level attempts. But stringing everything together was a different story. He wasn't able to get it. So once again, he shelved the 5-2 project and had to go back to setting world records. Poor guy. Yes! 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 But finally, in February 2023, Nivtsky came back again. This time, he was committed to doing the full level. After all the strategies we've seen, all the innovations that brilliant players came up with, they all built up to this moment. Somebody had finally gotten good enough to play a perfect 5-2. Now, Nivtsky just had to execute it. Oh my god! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! I did it! I did it! Oh my god! Yes! Holy crap! Dude, I literally imagined myself getting into Warp Zone and I did it! And I freaking flipped it first! This has been the history of 5-2. Thanks for watching.